Um, so, like, beyond just being a process you want to be, you have to do for the class, like, it's something that you will not get away w away from if you choose to go into any kind of art-related career. Um, the thumbnail is, like, the most important step because it is the closest one to your brain. Right? And I'll show you how fast they, they can go. So what you do is you just divide up your paper uh, into a bunch of squares. It doesn't matter how big your, or small your paper is, you just divide it up. If you're working on a storyboard, you can actually buy storyboard paper that has the, the format already like drawn out for you. Or if you really are into thumbnails, you could make carefully make some paper and copy it out. So you have them always have thumbnailing paper. Um, but basically these are cheap ideas at compositions. So this is the first pass. So if I decide that my that this trash can here is like what I want to draw, I have to pick how I'm going to focus on that. And I have a lot of options, right? I can take sort of a close-up view of the trash can. Right? You can track the shadow, draw a little bit of the trash that's in there, and a little cabinet behind it. Right? That is a complete thumbnail right there. And it took like five seconds. But it gives me an idea of this shape here, how it interacts with this shape, this shape, this shape here, and the little shape of the shadow, and here, and this little triangle off in the corner, right? So what I'm trying to decide is what makes an interesting composition. That's all I have to do in thumbnails. Or I can say, well, okay, I want to include like more of the whole trash can. So the trash can's here. And I'll actually be able to look into the doorway see more of the cabinet. So now the main compositional thrust is this big negative area back here. Right? And then I just keep going, you know? I say, well, what if I, what if I go cut the trash can off, but I'm still close up, and I see a little bit of door frame, and that, and that, and that cabinet, and that's about all I see, right? and the shadow. Sometimes you want to include a shadow as a compositional element. Um, then what if I look at the bottom of the trash can, right? Still on the close-up kind of thing, but now I see the, the bottom of the cabinet, the base of the cabinet. It's not an interesting drawing, but it could be an interesting composition, you know? Or what if I kind of cut all of the trash can off, really, and I look at, like, the middle of the trash can? What is that like? That's super minimal, just these, like, diagonals kind of going down, little shadows and stuff. Could be interesting. Could be super boring. It's hard to say. Um, if it's hard to say, what you may need to do is actually do a poster and gauge the value distribution like really quickly. I'll be working with a couple of grays and a couple of values. Could be a good basis for an abstract piece. Um, then again, I can say, well, here I've kind of taken the outer view, but I've plopped the trash can in the middle. What if I take the outer view and plop the trash can off to the side? What then gets included? I now have Lots more cabinet to deal with in that negative space going back. Right. So I have this huge empty zone now that I have to account for. Right. Now I have this even bigger negative space. Right. You see it? And then I say, well, what if, what if this were over to the left and small? Right. 
now the cabinet's kind of disappearing and it becomes about this doorway, right? And the door frame and the door going back at an odd angle and then maybe a couple of objects in the back and this little cord that I see over there, right? So that's basically it for the thumbnails. What you like? I've only done like seven here, but what what if you do like thirty? You could come up with basically thirty five. Like you'd have maybe five totally unique variations on it, but then you'd have twenty five variations based on each of those. You know. So essentially, what you do is you just take this idea and you chase out the permutations of each idea that you have, right? So, what if you do close-up of the trash can cropped off to the left, trash can high, right? What if you do the same thing but you crop the trash can down low, right? So basically what you're doing is taking your elements and just moving it around on the, on the page. You know, but, and this takes so little time that you can cycle through many, many ideas very quickly. So what you do is, let's say that you like this original first one, and you like um, this, this one like right here, and you can't decide between the two, okay? Then you can take those two thumbnails mildly further by doing a little bit of poster. You do, so you do the poster effect, Anywhere that you see shadow, you go ahead and put down dark. And then you do it for this one too. So you see dark in here, inside the trash can, behind the trash can, and then that cabinet. You don't want to take this to a, a sort of like great rendering level. And actually this will be dark because it's this dark green. Then you say based on the relationship of light and dark in each of these and these shapes that I see, which one do I like more, right? The decision by this point will most likely be very clear. And that's what leads you into doing the smaller 5x7 studies in drawing too. So what this does is this basically, this determines all of your compositional decisions. So by the time you scale it up big, you're already done with the composition, right? The five by seven, you choose all of the value relationships, right? So you no longer have those decisions to make when you go to the big. So by the time you've scaled up, you've done your composition, all your value relationships, and, and you're left with content, texture, mark making, all the higher level fun concepts to make drawing really interesting, you know. And you do that by doing the boring thumbnails as quickly as possible, cycling through your ideas.